Hi, I'm Lindsay Prohl, and right now I'm standing in front of the Mall Titanic in Branson, Missouri to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Titanic disaster that occurred on April 15, 1912. Most everyone knows what happened to the so-called unsinkable ship, the Titanic, but what most people don't realize is how great the loss of life hurried along the radioactive 1912. Before the Titanic tragedy occurred, the U.S. Congress had already been debating on whether or not to put boundaries on radio operators. They also couldn't agree if, on if the government should control the wavelengths. The Radio Act of 1912 solved quite a few problems with maritime ships and their ability to communicate with one another appropriately. In this documentary, I will attempt to show how the Titanic disaster could have been avoided if the act had already been established. The first problem was the improper staffing with the radio operators. At this time in history, there were no guidelines for how long a radio operator could stay on duty. The radio operators obviously had to sleep and go to the bathroom and could not be on duty for 24 hours straight. This proved to be a problem for the Titanic. The Titanic sent out distress calls and one of the ships, the SS Californian, did not receive it because the sole radio operator on that ship was not on duty. Unfortunately, the SS Californian, which was less than nine miles away from the Titanic, could have saved the majority of the people who did not make it onto lifeboats, as witnessed by Eva Hart, one of the few remaining people that were on Titanic. I mean, I saw that ship. It's terribly close. And the other thing I'm saying is that I didn't see a ship 19 miles away. I saw a ship that was so close, and they said at the time it was less than nine miles away. Now they're trying to say it was 19. Um, I saw it, you know, it wasn't just lights on the horizon, you could see it was a ship. The Radio Act solved this problem by ordering all ships to employ at least two operators to take turns sleeping and using the restroom. Secondly, there was confusion about what the rockets meant. We know the Titanic was using them to show they were in distress or danger, also seen by Eva Hart. And I saw our rockets being fired, which that ship must have seen. Well, this inquiry says that they did see it, but they didn't think it was a portent of danger, but I would have thought in the middle of the Atlantic, in the middle of the night, <laughs> that rockets must mean trouble. The officers on the SS Californian assumed that the rockets were being used to show that they were nearby so they would not collide. During the sinking of the, t the Titanic, it was conventional for vessels that don't have wireless radio transmission to use flares to associate themselves to the other liners. After the Radio Act of 1912 was established, all confusion between the meanings of rockets have vanished, for it was agreed that all liners must assume that they are distress signals. Among the other problems, one of the worst difficulties was amateur radio operators interfering with professional radio operators. Here is a reenactment of a conversation between two liners, the Californian and the Titanic. Say, old men, we are stopped and surrounded by ice. Shut up, shut up. I'm working with Cape Race. You are jamming me. Sorry, please repeat. I am jammed. But they weren't the only ones who were having problems with interference. The Carpathia and shore stations were also interrupted by other babbling operators. The solution to this was giving amateurs lower wavelengths than professionals and the creed that if an amateur goes beyond his given wavelength, his permit could be taken away. The last problem, and not least, is wrongly used equipment. Part of this issue was that some liners didn't even have a single radio. Another part was if a ship's generator blew up, there was no way of getting power. But the Radio Act of 1912 solved these difficulties by making all ships include a radio and an extra generator. It is, of course, unfortunate that all these laws and rules weren't established before the Titanic sailed and that thousands of people died. But after the catastrophe on the Titanic, the Radio Act of 1912 assured that anyone who gets on a ship, including me, doesn't have to worry about communication problems anymore. Because all these problems were removed by the Radio Act of 1912 and the decisions that were made. Today we have at least two radio operators on duty at all times, and we don't have confusion with distress rockets and what they mean. It is also mandatory that all ships are equipped with backup generators. The Radio Act of 1912 also made it illegal for amateur operators to interfere by determining what wavelength they could use. 
A radio operator can lose his license if he goes beyond his given wavelength. These laws could have prevented so many deaths from the Titanic. So from now on, I hope that when you hear the word Titanic, you won't think of the terrible and disastrous thing that happened, you, but the little bit of good that came out of it. The Radio Act of 1912.